In this video, I'm gonna take you through the step-by-step -step process of getting product photos just like these. All the way from start to finish, and with a lot of tips to help you improve your photos along the way. To start things off, the first thing you have to do is to find yourself a product. I have this beard oil, which I think looks really interesting, so that's the one I'm gonna focus on today. But you can use literally any product you have. Once you have found your product, the first thing you need to do is to figure out what kind of product photography you're going for. If you have been hired for a shoot, I would recommend you take a meeting with the client to talk about what they want and talk about what it requires in order to get to that result. But for me today, I just want to do a cool set of photos from my portfolio and bring you guys along. So what I like to do is to go on Pinterest or Instagram in order to scroll through and see if there's any photos that catches my eye or looks really cool or something I want to recreate or something that inspires me. Once you have found some inspiration, you can start creating an image up in your mind. To me, this is a beard oil, so I'm thinking something like a lumberjack or a blacksmith or something with a big beard. I just feel like the product fits that classic bearded and raw environment. And so for the main shot, I'm gonna start out with a wide shot of the whole product and a lot of environment. Then I'm gonna go on to a detailed shot of the open bottle with the oil. And the last shot is gonna be a macro shot of the label and the bottle itself. So what you can do now is do a quick sketch either on the computer or a piece of paper in order to visualize the shoot. Remember, the better prepared you are before you're even shooting, the easier the shoot is gonna go. But for me today, I already have the shot up here and I know everything I need and I have it ready. The first thing I'm going to do, which I advise you to do the same, is to set up the hero shot, which is just the main shot of your session. And as I said before, I am going for a lumberjack or a wood type working thing with a lot of texture and a lot of complementary colors. So to start off, I found myself this table or a wooden crate it is very old, it's very rusty, it looks very cool. I just think this can look really cool with a lot of different props all around. I'm gonna bring you closer. As you can see, right here we have the product. And I'm just gonna put it right like this, like so. Okay, so now that I have found the place for my product, I'm gonna use a little trick. I'm gonna use some of this sticky tag. In order to make sure that this is not moving, I'm just gonna take a small piece. And I actually use this for a lot of my products. Just gonna make sure that it is the right way. Here we go. That way your product is not going to move during the shoot, which you never want. Now I'm going to take a quick photo with my camera here just to show you how it looks as it is. Something like this. So this looks really cool. It has some nice textures. But the thing is, it is very plain. It's very boring to look at other than just the texture and the oil. So what I'm gonna do now is just fix that and show you the result. Okay, so what I did was I added an X and some of this, an old school kind of bag, and then just added a lot more wood texture just to give it a little more pop in the photo. Let's take one and see what we're gonna get. There we go. So I really like the composition, I like how the bottle looks and all the textures, but what I'm missing it's just a bit of lighting. So I'm gonna be using my Godox SK300 Mark II to just create the main lights on this. And for me, this is also about playing. So I'm gonna move these lights around, take some different photos in different areas, just to see which ones I like the most. So now I have taken a few photos of this. I have uh, tried to move around a little bit with the things. I've moved the lights a little bit around just to make sure that I love the composition. The thing I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna make some light splash. For that, I'm gonna use one of these. This one just has a bunch of holes in it. And I'm gonna do that just to hopefully create some interesting lighting on the product. And that's the thing. You can just be as creative as you want. You can just play around with the composition and you can play around with the light until you hit an amazing photo. So I'm going to try to get a little more light right in the middle. I'm gonna do that by getting this one closer. As you can see, these look really, really nice. All we need to do now is just to throw it into Lightroom and then Photoshop, and then this one is ready. So that's our hero shot done. 
Now we need to go to the details. So for the first detail, I want to photograph the oil. So what I have done here is that I've taken it out and I have gotten a little bit of oil inside of this tube and it is simply just laying on top of it. I have my main light in front and then I still have the light splash from behind. Let's see. Okay, so I have to change the composition a little bit for this one because I'm not very happy about how it looks. All right, so this is the second setup for the first detail. I got the oil out, as you can see right here. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a foreground element and we have a little bit of a background element here just to give it a little more dynamic. Here we have the second photo. I am gonna do a little bit of photo stacking here in order to add some more light to the label independent of the rest of the photo. So let's get to the last one. For the last shot, I'm gonna have to be really close, which means I either have to have a macro lens or one of these macro tubes. The good thing about these macro tubes are that they are very inexpensive and these ones have the little electronics. So I can still use everything in the lens. I can still change the aperture. I can still use the autofocus and everything. The only thing that really changes are the focal point, which means I can get even closer to my subject and still keep everything sharp. The main drawback is that the edges will be a little more out of focus, but for me in this case, it doesn't really matter. And to use these, all you have to do is just turn off your camera, take off your lens, add whichever one you're gonna use. I'm gonna try with this 10 millimeter at first. Whack. And then put it back on my camera. And then I'm ready to go. Simple as that. There we go. So that's it. Now we got it. Now I'm ready to go home and start editing. But if I had a little more time or I was just starting out learning, I would probably spend some more time just trying things out, maybe changing the whole setup, maybe do something completely different to this just to practice and just to see if there could be any other cool photos with this one. But let's head back home to the computer and I can show you how I finish my photos. So now I have imported all the photos into Lightroom and I have already picked out the photos I'm gonna use. As you can see, there are four photos down here, which is because on this one, I'm gonna do some photo stacking in order to get some more light on the label. I could have maybe spent some more time and added an extra light on set, so I didn't have to do this, but for me, this one is just a little bit easier. So I always start with the hero shot, the main shot right here. So inside Lightroom, we have all these different tabs to edit. You probably know most of them, but if you don't, I am gonna tell you a little bit about them once I'm using them. So the first thing I'm going to do with the photos is I'm going into lens correction and I'm going to remove and enable profile correction in order to fix whatever the lens artifacts are going to be, as you can see, before and after. It makes a little bit of a difference. You can also do that manually by going into distortion and you can, you can pull it out or in or whatever fits your photo. But for me, just letting Lightroom do it is perfectly fine. After this, I'm going into the basics up here in order to make sure that I have the correct exposure, the highlights correct, the shadows, white balance, and so on. So as you can see, I could warm it up and I can cool it down a bit. I actually like where it was at the 6300, and I do believe it is a bit too dark. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that. Then I would also like to see a little bit more of the shadow. Usually I pull it all the way to one extreme and then pull it back until I like what I see. So I actually think this looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is go down to calibration. I know a lot of people don't use calibration but I find that it is actually very very good. It's a bit weird as you can see when I'm pulling the red I get purple and I get yellow. And if I'm pulling in the green, I get more some reddish and some yellowish tones. And blue, I'm getting green and red. So it's not affecting the colors in the same way that it would up in colors or HLS. So I'm gonna pull the blue a little towards this just to get some more warmth in the image. Let's see with the green. Just pull it a little towards the reddish again to get some more warm colors, warm tones in it. 
now I think I'm gonna go into the detail tab and I'm gonna pull up the mask and the little trick is that on Mac you can hold on option which gives you this black and white image if you're on PC you just hold alt and you can see what it affects everything that's white is gonna be affected by the sharpening everything that's black is not so you can just pull it up here and see how much of this image do you want to sharpen I think this looks pretty good looking at detail it's a bit hard to see you can look at this one you can also move it around here so I'm just gonna look at that and see something like that and the radius as you can see here how thin does the sharpening have to be I think something like this we do this and do it just gives it a bit more of a pop I know this shot was done at ISO 500 so I am just I'm just removing a little bit of the noise and again you can hold down alt or option and you can see how much you're gonna change right I think this looks great the next thing I would probably do is I would go into my tone curve I would like to make it a little more faded black so I'm just gonna lift the blacks a little bit and then I'm gonna do a small S curve just to get out of it something like that I think the bottle itself is a little bit dark so I think I'm gonna go into this one and ask it to find my subject found the bottle but it's not completely what I want so I'm just gonna undo this mask and, and I'm just gonna go with this one simple circle something like that something like that you can see the before and after. I think I'm gonna put in a little bit of clarity here just to make it pop a little bit more. Now I am going into the color tab. You can also use this one, HSL. It is simply just hue, saturation, and luminance split up into different color tones. Where you can use this one and you can literally just click in the image and you can pull it up and down to change the hue and you can do the same off. Thing with saturation so you reset the colors by simply just double tapping i usually like going with the color tab so i can go into the yellows and the orange and i can change them individually both here saturation and luminance at the same time again you can really just push it to one side just to see how extreme it can get and then you can pull it back to wherever you like it Something like that. Just take a little bit of the color out. Okay. Let's see, I really like the blue. I would like a little more color in that. Something like that. Now I am basically done. If you press Y, you can see the before and after photo. And you can hold Shift Y to see it side by side. And as you can see, it got a little more stylized. And as I can see, it's a bit too much on the warmer side. That's okay because now I'm going into color grading. This is where you can really stylize your shot. And I'm thinking I would like some orange and teal for this one. You can pull out here to change the color. And here you can get a feel of what it does. Actually, I like that it's a bit more over here. I'm just gonna turn it a little bit more back. See the before and after just takes a little bit of the warm out of the image the last thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna crop the image so the last thing i'm gonna do because i did this photo handheld is i'm gonna crop it usually when i shoot i shoot a little bit wider than i actually need in order to make sure that i can crop it and get the perfect framing and post do something like this this one is a lot better look at that what i can do now is i can simply just Hold shift and click on the last photo in the set and I can click down here to synchronize. I'm not going to use crop and I'm not going to use transform because I have not used transform and crop. I want to do that on the photos individually. But everything else is checked and synchronize. And there we go. Every single photo now has the same edit as the first one, which means that now they all still fit together. So now it's time to go on to the next photo and see this one. It's a little bit more dramatic. I'm going into basic and I'm simply just 
pulling a little bit in exposure in order to bring some more light in. Still looks good. What about the last one? This one could use a little bit more and just pull it back a little bit in exposure. All right, so now I am going to send this one into Photoshop. And to do that, through Lightroom, you just right click, go into Edit In and into Photoshop. This is gonna create a copy in Lightroom, which means that you can still go back and you can edit and you can use the original. There we go. The first thing I'm gonna do whenever I'm in Photoshop is that I'm gonna use Command J to copy the layer. And that's simply because I like to have the original layer in case anything happens further down. So I can always have that as a reference. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in something like that size and I'm just gonna go around if you press J and just clean up every single thing I see. I'm just gonna do that now and I'm gonna bring you back when I'm done. That's before and after in the bottle. And as you can see, it does a lot to just give it a little more cleaner look. Now it's time for the rest of the image. I just see a little bit down here by the X. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go down here. There's just a little bit of white spots that I think is a little bit distracting when you look at the image. I don't like that spot, however, this one is a little bit too much. I'm just gonna do that. No, so I actually really, really like this one. As you can see, it's a little more clean up here. I'd like to get this a little more cleaned up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the layer again, go into blur, Gaussian blur, and then just something like 6.2, as you can see. Just to simply clean it up a little bit, I'm gonna create a mask, invert it by Command I, press B for the brush. You can change this one down here by pressing X. I'm gonna use white, I'm gonna use a small soft brush. Just gonna draw in what I would like. And if you zoom out, I think this looks a lot better. I think this image is ready. So to save this image back to a Lightroom, I'm going to use Command S. Go and go back into Lightroom, and as you can see, it has made a copy in Lightroom right here with the original one right next to it. Now, the next one, I have to do a photo stacking, and to do that, mark both layers, right click, edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. It will simply just open the photos as layers inside the same Photoshop, as you can see right here. So, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the logo from this one and probably the flask right here with the oil. I think that looks a little more interesting than this one. And to do that, I am just going to press screen and then I'm going to add a mask and Command I to invert it. Press B to get the brush, press X to make it white. And then I'm just gonna draw in where I wanna keep. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Perfect. This is way too bright right now, but I can simply just pull it down with fill until I like it around here, 55. It just makes the logo a little more clear to see, a little more visible. Now, before I'm gonna do anything else, I'm going to hold Shift, Option, Command, and E to merge all the layers below into a new layer above. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm just gonna clean up all these small spots and then I'm gonna come back There we have it. As you can see, it's just simple cleanup. Again, this one, I'm just gonna create a new layer, Gaussian blur, something like that. Create a mask, Command I to invert, before and after. Yes, I'm just gonna Command S and save it. And then I'm simply just gonna do the same for the last one. And then I can show you all three photos together. there we go. These are the final results. If you have any questions or ideas, throw me a comment. And if you want to learn how to get the work you want, check out this video right here.